anything else exciting coming along in the way of your own publications? Yes, I just had a new hypertext come out, as a matter of fact, in Liminalities. It just came out a few days ago. Mm -hmm. And it's on uh, um, female to male transgendered young men who use testosterone. And what I do is address the idea of the, what has been an essentialist idea of the body actually being there and being subject to what we know. Mm -hmm. But I argue that it's another form of social constructivism, the use of testosterone, which really does change the body um, uh, amazingly. Uh, I argue that it is a method of social construction because these men are choosing to use testosterone to transition. It's not a random choice. It's been thought out. It's often been hardly are, are really heavily fought for because it's expensive. Um, many of my subjects are Canadian, and that's because they have socialized medicine, so it's covered. So they just have to say, I need it, and then they go through some psychological testing, and they get testosterone. So the form of it is case studies, and I looked at some really interesting people, and these young men are, are um, very articulate and they've been using what are called T diaries and that's testosterone diaries to document their change starting for instance with their attempts to get into the system that's especially for the American subjects the US subjects and then they document things like their very first shot they'll document things like breast removal what's called top surgery they'll um, they'll document things like their gender reassignment surgery on bottom, the addition of the penis, and it's just really fascinating stuff, especially as you watch the voices, or rather listen to the voices deepen, uh, facial and body hair begin to sprout in ways that it hadn't before, and it is just such a stunning transformation. I used videos from YouTube, there's tons of them out there. And in fact, I want to pick up that project again and turn it into a full-length project as soon as I get some of the backlog out. But uh, it's really interesting. One of them doesn't have videos because that young man decided to go what's called stealth. And so he was recording all these diaries, and, and then he decided he wanted to pass all the time, 100% as male, rather than passing as transgendered male. And so we asked people not to disseminate these, not to keep them, not to archive them. He didn't go so far as to say destroy them. But he did say, don't, don't, if you see me on the street, don't say hi and re reference my status, and so forth. So I honored that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're, a lot of your um, scholarship um, and your teaching uh, actually has uh, gender as a focus mm -hmm. um, and I, you know I'm not exactly sure how to fold this question back into Kairos and web texts um, but but I, I I do think that Kairos has uh, worked hard to deal with um, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to look for diversity um, mm -hmm. within the material that it sometimes solicit, sometimes just comes to them. And um, uh, I'm, I, I don't know if you have anything to say about that or not. I do. In terms of gender, gender, of course, as I indicated, is a social construct. We all know that. And it's very much a performance, therefore. And there's no better way to document performance. It's one thing for me to say, their voices got very deep. It's another thing to have a series of videos in which the voices get very deep and you can hear the difference. It's one thing to say they now have body hair where they did not. And they will, they will do things like show their chests. They will do things like show armpits. Some of them show crotches just to, to show everything that is changing. The, they are so proud of the change of bodies. And web texts give a way to document that and display that in ways that mere print can't. And that's the big difference. Okay. Anything that's a performance um, is benefited, I think, by this stuff. Right. It, it, to, to use text as the only medium uh, 
it really you know it's like writing about dance yeah <laughs> as opposed to showing the dance yes or writing about film just show the film right okay. happens in teaching too I love teaching film classes online mm -hmm. because I can just put a link I use uh, a number of sources. I don't use YouTube. I, I use commercial sources where they can rent the video mm -hmm. and uh, or buy it, their choice. And so um, there's just a lot of stuff out there. And I can just put it out there and say, you watch it by Monday at 10 p.m. We begin discussing on Tuesday. We discuss it for the next week. And meanwhile, also watch the next thing. Now, that does, that's not to say that students do it. <laughs> but on the other hand, I've always thought that film classes that take place in a traditional face-to-face -face classroom, where you're bringing a bunch of students together to watch a film together, is eating up horribly into the time you could be discussing. There's a question here about curation. Um, I also don't worry at all about whether the work that I do lasts a huge amount of time. So mm -hmm. The idea that something won't be preserved, I, I don't think is as it felt as problematic by um, those of us who work in, in multimodal environments. I find it problematic. Um, too many web journals have broken links all over the place. Kairos, as you know, is really careful with that. Right. There are still a couple of them, mm -hmm. you know, um, my article included. Uh, there's a couple broken places that I should probably fix someday. Um, Kairos' then decision, I don't know if there's y'all still doing it, but that uh, archive text versus live text distinction, that was certainly prevalent then, right. is really helpful. Um, at Technoculture, we think about it all the time. Because while we don't think we're here for the ages, on the other hand, it would be nice to be around for more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so things like uh, we've just switched over to HTML5 and we use the audio and video tags. That means uh, three different versions of video and two different versions of audio for every single piece. Well, two versions of audio if it's an audio only work, which we also publish. But if it's a video piece, we will. Um, also put out audio when we have time for it. We're very, very small staffed. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, but it does take three for video and two for audio. And all those have to be put up on a server and all those have to live there all the time. And I wish that people could decide which format was the right format. Uh, it's... it's irritating. Well, partially it's because Microsoft is dragging its heels uh, on MP4s. Right. So they are just, as long as Internet Explorer exists, uh, we have to have backwards compatibility because so many people still use it, even though it is it is what it is. Okay, well, I, this has been fun. <laughs> uh, I, I said that I would try to take up only 30 minutes of your time, and it looks like it's at about 30 minutes now. Are there other things that you'd like to talk about? or? Um, yeah, yeah, I'd like to, I would like to see one genre of hypertext just die. <laughs> and that's the one in which there is a linear text that is chunked. And at the bottom, there's a link to the top of the next page. And then there's a link at the bottom of that page to the next page. And that's all together too prevalent. I like really heavy hypertext when I write hypertext. And the other thing that I think is important to note is I think HTML, as HTML, where you have the ending .html is dying, and I don't think it's just a matter of things like, uh, just of course things are moving to dynamic HTML, XML, and all those kind of things, but I also think the more profound change is going to be CMSs. And, and it makes an invisible interface. In other words, it's possible for people to write really easily and clean code with the right WYSIWYG editor. I'm a big fan of WYSIWYG editors. I, I know not a lot of people are, but I'm a real big fan of them for writing complex texts in a, in a short amount of time. And where you don't have to worry about someone not having all sorts of expertise. Drupal plus CK editor as a plugin 
beautiful code. I love clean code. <laughs> I hate code you can't read. That was a big problem in my disk using the word. Right. It was HTML option. You got all that garbage. Yes. Yeah, and you get, you know, two megabyte files for three words. Not good. <laughs> well, thanks That's very it. much, Keith.